Hi everyone, or as one would say in this part of the world, Здравствуйте. This is Catherine Hyvarnan, company owner of Hyvarnan Language Training, also known as HLT. My last two videos, which gave a general view on the world of entrepreneurship and teaching, were a stepping stone and introduction for my upcoming videos, which will now be focusing more on my experience in Russia, plus concentrating on the changes that I have been witnessing in Moscow over the years. I have always been very interested in our world, on a political, cultural and economic level. From a very young age, I was exposed to so many different cultures, notably due to my international background. Born in Switzerland to Finnish British parents. The aspect of culture has always been deeply rooted in my upbringing, and whilst growing up, I somehow knew that I wanted to study in detail relations between countries, and so I opted to get a degree in international relations at Aston University in the UK. Russia has always been a mystery to me, and I grew up having this fascination for the country from a very young age. I was adamant that with time I would get to see Russia for myself. I first came as a tourist in 2004 and since that time understood that there was a growing need for language training in the country. From 2008 till now I have been traveling between Switzerland and Russia providing language and business training courses in international firms. It has without doubt been a fascinating experience and a real eye-opener so far. It certainly hasn't been the easiest of journeys in Moscow, and in recent years I have been closely watching events unfold in Europe and in Russia. It's an unusual situation to find oneself in, to be, in a way, sitting on the fence and observing relations between Europe and Russia. At university, on my international relations course, we were taught to really analyze in detail political, cultural, economic ties between countries from different angles, and that's what I'm still doing to this day. I'm being constantly pushed to enhance my theoretical, practical, analytical skills, and sometimes it seems as if my university course is still continuing to this very day. It's definitely not the easiest of tasks, as it requires a lot of patience, energy and mental strength. However, it's a very enriching and valuable experience. Moscow is changing as quickly as her roads. When I think about the word Moscow, I associate it with the Grand Kremlin Palace, Red Square, golden church domes, beautiful historical parks, birch trees, pigeons, street yard cleaners, Stalin skyscrapers that look like wedding cakes, and majestic metro stations resembling museums. The Soviet symbol, the hammer and sickle, is represented everywhere, on facades of buildings, gates, and also metro stations. Winters are harsh and very long. Snow is cleared manually on the streets and rooftops. On hot summer days, giant orange water trucks sprinkle streets night and day when it shines and also, amusingly, when it rains. When it's chucking it down, you learn to be rather athletic by jumping over puddles of water that sometimes look like rivers. A few years ago, Moscow had huge problems with its drainage systems, and I remember days when one could have canoed to and from business centers. It's a city that keeps you very fit, and citizens like to work on their sprinting skills. Running up and down escalators, stairs in metro stations, or in order to avoid getting totally drenched on rainy days, sprinting on pavements like Usain Bolt, whilst cars are going at full speed in huge puddles of water. Every day in this bustling city is at times as unpredictable as Moscow's weather. 
There are many stories to share, but in a nutshell, I can say that I have seen Moscow rise and fall over the years. An extreme case I can recall. I remember walking the streets of Moscow in 2008, and numerous exchange rate screens were dotted around the city. At the time, one dollar was 27 rubles. Then, at the end of 2014, on the 16th of December, I witnessed the ruble crash in front of my eyes. One dollar was 80 rubles, and one euro, 100 rubles. It sure has been an intense roller coaster ride in terms of understanding how connected our world truly is and how quickly things can go pear shaped. I wouldn't regard Moscow as being one of the friendliest and easiest of cities in the world. It definitely has its own special atmosphere, which can be rather heavy and draining at times. Nevertheless, huge renovation projects have taken place over the years to improve the image of the city for its citizens. Moscow has without doubt experienced a very quick transitional phase in recent years. It's a metropolis with huge potential and opportunities. In my opinion, it's a very attractive city now, with a lot to offer. I was recently flying back to Moscow from Geneva Airport, and whilst having my passport checked, the Swiss passport control officer said the following. Russia has so much to offer in this world. I hope the country will be able to show her true potential in future, because it's not only about oil and gas. There is so much more to be discovered in this vast country. Have a safe flight and continue helping the locals, because they need people like you. It certainly was touching and very uplifting to hear such words, and he's right. I see a lot of potential for growth, and I also do hope to see Russia shine in her own way in future. To all my students from around Russia that I have taught over the years and currently teach, this video is first and foremost for you. Not only have you helped me to grow professionally, but you have also contributed immensely to my own journey and experience in Russia. You have all been very important teachers in my life in terms of educating me about your country's culture, mentality and values. Russia, like any other country in the world, doesn't only have a single story. It's not only about politics and the state of the economy. It goes much deeper than that. Every student has a story to share. We all do. I thank you all very much for tuning in to my introductory video about Moscow. Continue sharing my videos and subscribing to my channel. Спасибо вам большое за внимание. До свидания. Thank you, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.